This is Office Talk with Annette Stepanian. Hi everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic week. Today I wanted to give you a quick introduction about what you can expect when you want to file your trademark with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. Specifically, I'm going to walk you through the four most common steps for doing so. First off, a quick refresher about trademarks. Trademark law protects those commercial signifiers that serve to identify a good or service in the marketplace. So these are your names or words, your logos, your slogans. Their purpose is not only to identify the source of such goods and services, but also to help distinguish them from others in the marketplace. When working with a client to get their trademark filed, I break down the process into four steps. If you're filing a word mark, the first phase is determining the strength of your mark. We first need to take a look at how distinctive your mark is. So if you imagine a spectrum of possible marks, on the one end you have descriptive and generic marks, and on the other you have arbitrary and suggestive marks. Arbitrary marks can be made up words like Xerox, Kleenex, Amtrak, or they can be actual words that have no association with the identified goods and services. For example, the Blackberry phone, Banana Republic clothes, or the Hard Rock Cafe. The closer you are on the arbitrary suggestive end of the spectrum, the stronger your mark is. It's helpful to talk to an attorney who understands trademark law to help evaluate the strength of your mark. So let's say you've got a mark and you feel pretty good about it. The next step is to do a trademark search. Why is a trademark search so important? Because if your desired mark is already in use in the marketplace, you don't want to waste your money or your time in getting it registered. Not to mention that you don't want to utilize a mark that infringes on someone else's trademark. At a minimum, you want to research the trademark office's database, called TESS, to determine the availability of the mark. It's important to note, however, that TESS searches are limited to federally registered trademarks or those that have applied for federal registration. That's why people will usually have a more comprehensive search done to include other sources to figure out if a mark is already in use in the marketplace. This will include searching state registered trademark databases, state business records and directories, as well as the almighty Google. There are also companies who can do these searches for you for a nominal fee. The goal is really to make sure your proposed mark doesn't conflict with a trademark that's already in use. The next step is the actual trademark registration filing. Much of this can be completed online, and in fact, by filing it online, you can save money on the filing fee. The trademark office charges a filing fee of about $225 per mark per class if filed online and $325 per mark per class if filed using their paper application. So let's say you want to file one mark as your logo and then one mark as your business name. Those are two separate fees. The cost will also go up for each class, i.e. category of goods or services that you're claiming your mark is associated with. And finally, once you've submitted your application, you should stand by to respond to any follow-up requests from the trademark office. Getting your trademark registered can take up to a year, and in that process, the trademark office may ask for supplemental information or clarification on your request. Be prepared to receive some follow-up questions from the trademark office and to respond in a timely manner. So that's it for the intro to trademark filings. If you have additional questions about them, or if you'd like to ask a question about law or business that you'd like me to address in a future office talk, submit your question over at annettestepanian.com slash Q&A. Looking for more resources? Well, make sure to stop by my website over at annettestepanian.com. There you'll find contract templates for your creative business, free legal webinars, upcoming courses, and loads of other goodness to help get your legal groove on. And while you're there, sign up for my free weekly newsletter where I share my best tips for laying the legal foundation for your business.